Am I wrong for telling my friend that I think his girlfriend is about to leave him? Plus update. Original post. I, 30 female, am friends with Ruby, female 30, and Tom, male 31. We met at uni and were part of the same group of friends. They got together in our final year. Then after uni, Tom and I started work, Ruby did masters while working. Her and Tom moved in together. After masters, Ruby landed a very good job, and Tom decided to quit his. Apparently, she wasn't happy, but let it go. Ruby and I were best friends, but after graduation, she became boring. While me and Tom would have a drink or two in their garden, she would study or work, and we drifted apart. Recently, Ruby has been more distant. When I come over, and Tom and I sit in the garden, she doesn't even join us, she does her own stuff. She barely acknowledges us, but Tom doesn't see an issue. I tried to tell him, but he said it's fine, at least she doesn't bother him while gaming anymore. She's lost a lot of weight lately. She's gained it because of her thyroid, and has just been focusing on herself. I tried inviting her to have a drink with us, but she always refuses. Frankly, I think she's taken adulting way too seriously. Last Saturday, I was out with some friends and were doing a pub crawl. At one, I noticed Ruby having a drink with her friends. I didn't even know she had any. And she was her old self, laughing, having fun, cracking jokes. She was the life of the party. I didn't know any of these people, and I suspected Tom didn't either. I texted Tom and he said he's busy with a game and we'll talk later. I couldn't let it go. She went outside with her friend and I followed them. It was crowded so she didn't notice me, and I kind of eavesdropped on them. I was lucky because they're talking about her plans, and it seems that she's planning on leaving Tom. That she's sick of him not working and ignoring her, but been stuck because he doesn't work. She saved money for herself, and saved a few months' money for him, so when she leaves, he can have money to live off. I couldn't believe my ears. What a witch. She said she's got her ticket and house sorted, but she saw me before saying more. She looked at me with disgust, didn't even acknowledge me, and she switched to another language with her friend. I got a taxi and went straight to Tom's telling him what I heard. He told me to stop being silly. I told him that he should consider what to do so she stays, and he said she has no reason to leave. We played some games and got a bit more drunk. I stayed on their sofa and didn't know when Ruby came home. I was woken up by Ruby at 2 p.m., and she called me an athol amongst other names, kicked me out of the house, and telling me to never come again. She was angry because Tom confronted her about leaving. She told me to not meddle, and I told her he has a right to know if she's going to leave, and has a chance to make things right. Was I really in the wrong for telling him? I mean, we used to be friends, but I don't think I have any obligation to her but I am not sure. Am I wrong for warning him? I thought he deserved that. Now for the top comments before reading the update. Congrats, you might have been the last straw that broke the relationship's back. She doesn't seem happy, and neither does Tom. Let the relationship end. And mind your business. It's bizarre you can't understand why she'd want to leave him. You're the idiot. Plus, she was going to pay for jobless Tom's expenses, rent etc. for a few months. That lady is no witch. She is actually way nicer than any ex deserves. I have never heard of anyone making the independent choice to float their ex, who they share no kids with, after leaving. Ridiculous, and so are you OP. You are, the idiot. Oh heck no, she's a better person than I am. His butt would be on the street already. Or OP's couch. He's happy though, that's why I think he has a right to know. Edit, he said that the only issue they've ever had, is her nagging him constantly, but that's been sorted and she stopped, and he's happier than ever. What does it change is that he knows. She was gonna tell him at some point. He wasn't gonna change her mind. You just made the situation worse. I thought he had a right to know to address any issue she may have, and convince her to stay, because he says he loves her and is very happy with her. He loves her because he gets to sit around and do nothing while she works. Why should she be miserable while he gets to do whatever he wants? He helps around the house. He suggested a child a few years back, so he could be a stay-at-home dad, but she refused. So, he's been helping with chores. He's not just sitting around gaming. You're the idiot, all the way. Meddling. She's too adult. She's a witch for planning to give him money to live on once she leaves. He plays video games and gets drunk while she works. I hope she leaves quickly to go live her adult life, and that you and Tom grow up. You're wrong OP. Let's not forget the eavesdropping and following too. What is that about? I agree with above comments that she has feelings for Tom, but Tom is also a deadbeat. He just quit his job and has been living off Ruby. I don't blame Ruby for wanting to make a move. I agree she should have been more communicative, but maybe she was, and Tom just ignored it. And now for the update. Crap has hit the fan. Last night, Tom knocked on my door crying. She kicked him out. They were talking, and he was begging for her to stay. 
He offered to find a part-time job and do more around the house, but she wouldn't listen to him and didn't care that he wanted to try. She said she's leaving in two weeks' time. He asked where and if they could meet and work on things while leaving separately, but says she's moving abroad. She asked him to go and stay someplace else while she is packing, and he can move back in once she leaves. She told him she had money saved up for him, so he'll have time to find a job. He asked her if he could get them now, since he has to go someplace else to stay, and she said absolutely not. She also said that because of that, meaning him asking her, she wasn't going to give him money for six months as she initially planned, but only for three months, because he only cares about money. So, he is now staying at mine because he doesn't have money to stay elsewhere for two weeks, and she wouldn't even give him a penny. He has his debit card. They had a joined account and she had a separate one, but she's transferred all but 100 pounds. That's all he has for two weeks. As you can see, she's not the saint you guys make her up to be. Tom is heartbroken, and all she cares is money and her move. She doesn't care how he feels or if he has a place to stay for the two weeks. He's happy though, that's why I think he has a right to know. Edit, he said that the only issue they've ever had is her nagging him constantly, but that's been sorted and she stopped and he's happier than ever. Laughing out loud. She stopped nagging because she decided she was 100% done and was just getting her ducks in a row. And apparently she's not a saint, even though she is going to give him enough money to survive for three months. She doesn't owe him any money at all. WTF. OP and Tom completely deserve each other as friends. They both think the poor girl should just shut up and pay for everything, do everything, because Tom is happy. How nice for Tom lol. The ex-girlfriend is well rid of both of them. I really kind of love how OP thinks the update made Ruby look worse in any way. Bless her little heart. The only problem was her nagging. Oh wow. No, the only problem he had was her nagging. OP and his bestie are perfect for each, they both have their heads nestled firmly up their butts. But that's been sorted and she stopped and he's happier than ever. A textbook case of walkaway wife right here. She didn't stop being unhappy. She just saw that it was useless to spend her time and energy trying to get him to be better, and she threw the towel in and turned her attention to preparing to leave. Now he's desperate to get her back, and she's already mourned the old relationship and she's ready to move on. Too little too late bud. As soon as I heard that she stopped nagging, I thought, oh. Oh my god, I've never seen anyone breaking up with a slacker boyfriend with this much consideration. And OP can't even see how biased her opinion is. After girlfriend confronted OP about spilling the beans and pushing up everyone's timeline, if I was the girlfriend, I would just tell OP, he's your problem now. I'm no longer giving him money to support himself. You want him to be happy. You take care of him. Next update, OP and Tom are now a couple. Then OP one year from now. I take back everything I said about Ruby. I need to get this guy gone. Now for the second story. Update. Am I wrong for refusing to divorce my husband? Original post. I, 30 female, met my husband Dave, 32 male, when we were little. He's been my best friend since we were 10. We were raised in very conservative Christian families in the Bible Belt. We followed the script expected of us, dated in high school, engaged in college, married after his graduation, and kids after I established a career. Kids are 5 and 3. We've been married 10 years. We separated but stayed legally married three and a half years ago because I finally admitted to him and myself that I'm a lesbian. I thought that I could fake it till I make it, but I just couldn't do it anymore. It was strained for a while and we continued couples therapy. Ultimately, we both wanted to do the best for our kids. For us, that meant continuing to live together. He lives in the apartment above our detached garage because neither of us wanted to be single parents. Eventually we both started dating other people, and I met my girlfriend Krista about one and a half years ago. She knew I had kids in an unconventional co-parenting arrangement up front, and I told her I was still legally married after six months of us dating. She had been fine with our living in co-parenting style prior to this, but was less than thrilled by my lack of official divorce. She asked if divorce was eventual, and I told her yes. Dave and I agreed we'd divorce when it no longer was mutually beneficial to remain married, like having a new potential spouse. The longer Krista and I were together, the more my being married bothered her. She feels remaining married symbolizes I'm subconsciously clinging to my straight identity and is a barrier to moving on with my life, which I mildly disagree with but understand. She does not want to get married and had voiced the opinion that it was just a piece of paper, so I'm surprised it's become such a big deal. I agreed four months ago that I would bring it up with Dave and set a timeline for divorce by the end of this year to make her happy. But two months ago, Dave's company downsized his job, and a week later, he found out his increasing fatigue and illness was aggressive leukemia. 
He's undergoing treatment that is estimated to be 10% effective in cases like his, and they told him to consider that this might be terminal. If the treatment fails, they've given him six months to a year. For Krista, this changes nothing. But for me, divorcing Dave now would be unconscionable and would make what is potentially his final months even harder than they have to be. Whether she likes it or not, he's the father of my children and my oldest friend, so to force the issue while he's fighting for his life would be incredibly selfish and damaging to both him and our kids. She's telling me that not only am I regressing into denial about my sexuality by refusing to bring it up again, but also that I'm already a selfish idiot by leading her on, and that I want the best of both worlds by remaining married to a man while continuing to date a woman. Now for the top comments before reading the update. I am sorry you're going through that. I understand what you wanted in the beginning, but now you are just looking after Dave. I understand where Krista is coming from. You haven't given up your straight relationship yet, and that is frustrating for her. But now I don't think it's about the relationship, it's about your friendship. I am sure others will disagree, but you are likely making Dave's life better at the probable end. I would hope that Krista would be able to understand what you are hoping to do in this scenario. Have you explained to her? I mean in reality, can you really argue that you have remained married at this point? You guys lead separate lives and are actively dating. At this point to me it really is just a piece of paper. I suppose if you still live with him it's easier to argue, but either way, I don't see the problem. But that's me. Anyways, I hope you figure something out. Best of luck to Dave. I've tried explaining, and she's insisting that the agreement I made with her is more important. She said that if Dave is really okay with my lifestyle like he says, it won't matter to him that we get divorced, and it definitely shouldn't matter to me. Not wrong, it doesn't make sense at this point to get divorced. With all due respect, if he's coming to the end of the road, why not just wait? I'm so sorry if this sounds insensitive, I don't mean it to be. If he makes the recovery then I'd bring it up, but until then, it's just a matter of time. He doesn't deserve the added stress from his best friend during these more trying last months or year. Your girlfriend needs to respect your family. Thank you, that's how I've felt about it. And you're not insensitive, it's pragmatic. But she's worked it all up to be this big psychological thing. Like, if I don't get the divorce before he passes away, I'll always have some lingering doubt that I really meant our separation. I forget exactly how she phrased it, but I took her words to mean that insisting on a divorce is confirming my new sexuality. Not insisting signifies I'm not really serious or committed to being a lesbian for life. And now for the update. First off, I know this isn't a support sub, and I didn't expect for it to be, but it kinda turned out that way. And I appreciate you all so much. Thank you. I received the most helpful, constructive feedback I've ever gotten in my entire life from this sub. As far as the issue at hand in my last post, I feel confident that I'm doing the right thing by not asking Dave for a divorce. Krista still disagrees, damn near violently. As such, she is no longer my girlfriend. I tried to have a calm adult conversation with her about it the night after my original post. Emphasis on tried. She was immediately aggravated and defensive. Told me that unless the next words out of my mouth involved signing divorce papers, we had nothing to talk about. I asked her why it bothered her so much, and it turned into an argument no matter how calmly I tried to remain. Ultimately, she admitted in a fit of rage that she felt people who stayed friends with their exes are psychologically damaged and guaranteed to cheat. When I asked if she knew my situation and felt that way, why did she press me for a relationship that she originally said she never wanted? She said that she assumed Dave would snap and do something that either was awful or that she could convince me was awful at some point. It then came out in our argument that she was pushing so hard on the divorce issue now to intentionally create tension and shatter Dave and I's care for each other because, again in her opinion, it's completely unnatural. That was it. I told her I was done and I didn't need a heartless, selfish, insecure, jealousy-riddled piece of trash like her in my life or around my kids. The rest of it after that was just immature on both of our parts, with us both yelling insults at each other while she threw stuff everywhere. Clothes, blankets, couch cushions, looking for things she'd brought to the house and left over the last year. The kids weren't there thank god. I had the foresight to see if Dave would have the kids for a sleepover in his apartment. I'm okay, I think, grieving a bit, which feels stupid considering everything. But I feel like I had a rotten tooth for so long, I didn't realize how much pain and pressure it was causing me until I yanked it out. Based on your original post, husband is dying. Your kids are about to lose their dad. You are about to lose, sexual orientation aside, someone you've built a life with. Krista does not register any of this as important. Think about that. She wants you to leave a family about to be plunged into a great deal of grief. This is not a person you want around your kids. 100% agree. The sheer toxicity of this person is astounding. 
considering even if you had gotten a divorce prior, your husband or ex would be in your life no matter what because you have children together. You made the right choice for both of you and have a healthy co-parenting method. Not many can do that. There is clearly something wrong with her and her thought process, to put it nicely. You're still not wrong, and I'm glad you got out of that relationship. There's absolutely nothing unnatural about exes staying friends if things ended on good enough terms, especially if kids are involved. That kind of absolutist thinking is super toxic. You're a good person for sticking by your husband through all of this, and your kids will think of you very highly for doing the right thing here. Best of luck to you and your family. It sounds like an incredibly tough situation, but you sound like a great person, and I'm sure you'll be a wonderful presence in your husband's life during this upsetting time. Also, look into those books called A Father's Legacy, or something along those lines, for your husband. He can fill them out and leave them for your kids once he's gone. Speaking from experience, getting a book full of anecdotes and advice from my father after he passed didn't make the situation even close to okay, but it really helped a lot and I still turn to that book all the time when I miss him.